the Forty OT podcast. Uh, my journey is very, very different to everyone else's because I'm 43 years old now, um, mm-hmm. and I wasn't diagnosed until I was 36. So my life was very troubled. So uh, one of the things, like with autism, is you get obsessed, don't you? You get obsessed about absolutely mm-hmm. everything. You find you find a piece of music and you listen to five seconds of it over and over again, or you hear someone say a word and you use that word in everything that you've ever done. And then <laughs> you find a film and then you watch that film until you know every word and you don't understand why no one else wants to watch that film with you, even though that's the yeah, only thing you ever yeah. talk about. And so I, not knowing that I was autistic, um as a kid I had like a really good imagination but then as soon as my teenage years hit it felt like all these walls that were in my head fell down and they like Mm -hmm. protected me from the world did these walls it protected me from sights and sounds and all sorts of things because you got so much energy as a kid and then you're told Mm -hmm. to sit down in high school and learn and the information was just overwhelming and I didn't realize I was being overwhelmed I didn't realize I was struggling I didn't realize I couldn't talk to people uh and so one day when I found alcohol I was like wow this is like the greatest thing in the world this like eased everything and I was 14 years old when I found alcohol and then Mm -hmm. I very quickly uh almost drank myself to death and by the age of 21 I was in rehab and I was in rehab for a year and a half um and I had Callum at the age of 19 um so yeah so I was in rehab for a year and a half and then I came out of rehab and they'd kind of cured the alcoholism kind of I say kind of because I still I had a well I have many relapses but every time I drank I wasn't yeah I wasn't drunk though like my body was drunk but my mind wasn't drunk that drunk feeling never ever came back like Mm -hmm. it's really really weird how the reprogram my brain but like i'm like a sponge for information as well so every day in rehab i was just like absorbing all and all this information Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. learning um because in rehab you need to learn the rehab that i went to and rather than relying on the 12-step program or stuff like that what the rehab did but i went to they taught you how your brain worked and because when you're an alcoholic or an addict uh you tend to have a drink and you blame it on something small And it's not Mm -hmm. that that happened. It's something that happened like five days ago that led to this snowball effect. And so in rehab, they teach you to follow the thoughts back and discover where they're all coming from. So I spent Mm -hmm. a year and a half Mm -hmm. of like learning that. So I came out of rehab with all this knowledge and all this wisdom, but I was a 20, like 23 year old. And so all my social skills had been damaged from all the drink. Then all my social skills had been damaged on top of that from all the rehab. And I couldn't drink. I couldn't go out and drink. So I started to be very, very insular. And, like, I found it really hard to talk to people. Talking to people would make me anxious. And, Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. someone, a girl would maybe say, oh, uh, it was nice to see you. And then I'd go home and I'd be like, did she mean it was nice to see me? Or is that what people say? And it was, like, so confusing. You'd get these really simple sentences. And they would be so simple that they would cause you to break down. Like, you Mm -hmm. don't understand, like, because people talk in such strange ways um but like uh, and all that kept going on i'd get more addictions so i got addicted to painkillers got addicted to other drugs and all sorts of things and it's like no matter what i did i couldn't stop the addictions and mm-hmm. uh then at the age of 32 or something i went to uni to study and at university i, I saw this on one of your posts on social media you had a very similar experience that i had at uni uh, i tried yeah, to fit the, in the alcohol is well it's it go on sorry go on <laughs> <laughs> right uh well at uni no i meant what you meant you, you said you were very isolated from people at uni and i had yes, the exact yeah, same thing i yeah. tried to fit in everyone was going out fresh as week everyone mm-hmm. was going out drinking everyone was invited everywhere and i wasn't invited any place anytime mm-hmm, ever mm-hmm. and it was like there were people who spread rumors in class about me and things because i was always honest and i assumed everyone else was always honest so i let yeah. people know i was an alcoholic and i had addiction issues because i thought that's what you should do but little did you, i know that you be, people... you're being honest and open you're yeah. not lying you you know you're putting stuff out there yeah i think it's 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 really hard isn't it because if you don't have sort of an awareness of of autism because in, in a lot of people's mind even when we we hear stuff about autism, you kind of always jump to these kind of very extreme stigmas of what you think it is. And it's very hard to like, it's like a wall for you, mm-hmm. for you being able to identify yourself with that yeah. because it's so, so out there and, you know, you feel like it's a separate thing to you. And um, I think, you know, definitely 
one of one of the biggest contributors to me with, with my issues with with alcohol was alexithymia you know not being able to attach my my thoughts and and experiences to my emotions yeah and it's really interesting when you said about you know something happened like 5 days ago and then you're trying to manage it now by by using the the substances to kind of help with that and that that's kind of a lot to do with with my experience of like having that separation it's like right i feel stressed i i only know that i feel bad i don't know why i feel bad but i i just know i feel bad and there's no way to process that in any way because i don't know what the cause is and um i think that's that's a really i think i like in, in in general especially you know related to autism um yeah. it's very very it's not very understood and i think it's you know it definitely has a really big impact on our ability to like regulate ourselves um and i, I know in general that the statistics around addiction and around alcohol are, are really 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 tough um it doesn't help that alcohol is so glorified yep, in crazy. the uk it's it's i mean it, it it's it's insane just you know the amount of events that as you said during freshers week the amount of events that go on it's it's pretty much a haven for for binge drinking yeah and you know something that that people don't you know that i didn't see around university nobody told me is that there is actually like a really hefty amount of deaths associated with binge drinking and it's um it's uh it's very hard hitting like to for, for me to come across that information just be like geez like how is this still happening like how is this still a thing why why is why is it such a such a part of our culture that we go out and consume this 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 substance very readily like our parents are like hey do you want some do you want some alcohol do you want a beer with this with with this meal your friends are like oh i brought you know a bottle of vodka let's drink this it's it's mad um yeah. and the the effects of it are you know almost immediate you have yep. withdrawal. You, it's you the know, only the, drug. The hangover. That, uh, it's the only drug. I learnt me some rehab, uh, but it's the only drug that affects every single part of your body. When I'd gone into mm. rehab, the backs of my legs, my calves, had, had cramped. They would not like um, r- relax. It was really horrible. Was that? But yeah, uh, alcohol is the only thing that affects like everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, it affects your just, brain, affects your yeah. liver, your blood vessels, your heart. It's it's it is it is absolutely crazy. Um, yeah. But I I know we're not talking specifically about alcohol in this It's podcast, cool. But... I could talk about alcohol all day <laughs> if you wanted to, Thomas. Um but yeah, so uh, yeah, so I was at uni and like it turned really bad and then I had to take a year out mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. to recover because that's like I had like the worst year of my life in 2013. Um and then I spent a whole year to like preparing and going back and I just smashed it when I got back. And I got a first. I finished off of my class. I was on the radio nice, and newspaper nice. and everything. But then as soon as I finished uni, I got, I had an IQ test around that time. Like mm. um, a friend was like studying to be a doctor and they tested out the proper IQ test, a two hour one, mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. the one with all sorts of things. And I enjoyed all of it, but uh, my processing speed on it was really, really bad. And they said like when the results came back that I had strong signs of autism. So I went to a guy, a a guy though, I went to someone, a doctor, and they diagnosed me with autism. And that moment was the craziest moment ever because my processing speeds are so slow anyway. I'll get upset Mm -hmm. by something today, but I won't react to it for like another few days. Yeah, uh, that's like, yeah. but this thing was so big. This was like looking back on my entire life and everything was different. And like the only it's, good example I have is like, it's a twist at the end of a film. Like you've watched this massive film and then suddenly they say, oh no, but the like, it was this mm-hmm, way. And you're mm-hmm. like, what? And that's exactly how I thought. And I, it, what's crazy is I went through all the stages of grief. There was denial. There was anger. There was sadness. There was like yeah, loss. Yeah. And like, yeah, but as soon as it like clicked, that that's what was going on and because one thing my autism gives me is this amazing ability to sense patterns and solve puzzles and like i see patterns everywhere it's like it makes songwriting and script writing and anything creative really really good because i feel the patterns when they're in place and so when i was looking back at my life it allowed me to see this pattern of creativity and every time i'd created something i was getting out the stuff that was in my head 
and I'd done it all my life. And it was only at that point that I was like, this is how I keep myself well. This is how I stop drinking. This is how I keep the addictions under control by Mm -hmm. keep making things. And so from that point on, it became like my mission to like keep creating and tell people how important creativity is because it really does save lives. It like keeps you well. It allows you to get out all the subconscious thoughts. It allows you to get out all the horrible thoughts, all the nasty things, all the horrible experiences. It allows you to get them out in a really productive and safe manner and put take like literally take them pull them from yourself and put them somewhere else but Mm -hmm. like but where my brain is it like it constantly fills up with this stuff like all the sensory input and all the bad thoughts and things yeah so the creativity is a constant job so it's like i'm forever like grabbing bits like like a bucket and you're trying to poke some holes into it to let the let the water come out exactly (laughs) and so yeah when i got that my diagnosis that's what clicked and it was like this is what's what Mm. my life is and this is what i should be doing with my life my um my good friend uh, Brian Bird he he does a lot of like um public speaking around the country he's um a very late diagnosed individual um and he he talks a lot about sort of the the experience of late diagnosis it's kind of like um you, you're basically challenging the the whole identity that you've had for the majority of your life and the the older that you are the the more like hard hitting it is and it is kind of in a sense mourning but it's also like sort of being born again like mm-hmm. you've had a you've had a new you're having a new adolescence you kind of looking back through your life and picking things out and going you know the stuff that you gave yourself a hard time you pick it out and you like look a bit more closely in the lens of yeah. in the lens of autism I and felt suddenly, very sorry it, suddenly for myself. The, like, su- yeah. Suddenly, the 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 picture changes a little bit, and it's it's kind of like you see that event from a whole different new angle. Like, yeah, yeah. Like I, I felt very sorry for the younger me, the one who didn't have a clue what was going on, because yeah. it was. I just I don't wish, but if there was someone there to just help and just say, "Oh, this is how things should be," which is kind mm-hmm. of like what happened with me. And 12 gauge, like when Callum came to live with me, it was like, mm-hmm. that's what I did. I was like, I did what should have been done with me with uh, 12 gauge. Cause mm-hmm. I just needed someone to pick me up and hold me tight and say, right, that's not how things work. This is how you should do it. And this is why you should do it. And that's what happens when you don't do it like that. Cause people just give instructions. Don't be like, I ah, don't drink too much. You'll die. And like, okay, I'm not dead. I'm doing what I want and you'll drink as much as you want. <laughs> but like, and so like, they don't, they don't give you the detail, do they? Yeah, they don't say like, to... right, this is what happens in your brain and yeah. this, these chemicals yeah. go up and yeah, like, uh, it's just, it's like, it's like what the doctors do. It's like when they yeah. tell, um, you know, people who are becoming very, very overweight and obese, they tell them like, you need to lose weight. It's like, why? Yeah. Like, well, well, what's that going to do? How am I supposed to do it? Um, they just kind of give you this list of things that you're supposed to do when you, they're all very, very complex things and they, they have lots of different aspects to them that you kind of have to work through and try out. And, um, they just don't communicate that in a way that, that, that people take it seriously. Cause it's like, Oh yeah, the doctors, yeah. Exercise. Yeah. Eat well, sleep well. Like, of course. Um, <laughs> yeah. I know. Definitely. It's yeah, no, it's just mad. It's just a mad world that we live in and just a mad society as well. But yeah, that's that's basically my story and that's why I create. It's like it keeps me well and it keeps me mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. important. And it keeps me happy more than anything else. Uh, definitely. Yeah.